When Smash 64 released in 1999, Pikachu was an obvious choice for a fighter. Pokemon had only been released three years prior, but it was taking the world by storm, and Pikachu was the clear face of the franchise. But it's a little odd that Pikachu got such notoriety. The little lightning rod rodent wasn't an original starter in Pokemon Red, Green, or Blue like Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. In fact, Pikachu wasn't even easy to find. Koji Nishino, a data designer for the Pokemon series, loved the character so much that he hid it. In truth, Nishino said in an interview, I just loved Pikachu so much, I didn't want players to find it easily. However, rarity tends to add value. Among players, it was treated as the first rare Pokemon to appear in the game. That made everyone want it, Nishino said. While Pikachu was a cult hit, the Pokemon's stardom didn't hit until the show aired. Initially, Pikachu wasn't slated to be the star. Clefairy was. However, Pikachu consistently did better on focus tests. Even in the earliest days of development, Pikachu was a favorite amongst the Game Freak staff. The Pokémon's intense rarity just added more early value to it. So, by several odd twists of fate, this little thunder... squirrel? became a certified video game superstar. And by several more good turns of fortune, Pikachu has become one of Smash's best legacy fighters. Not just in Ultimate, but across the series. Of the original 12 fighters, 10 have fallen and stayed in low-tier territory at least once. The only two who haven't are Fox and Pikachu. This is so remarkable because Sakurai and his team make huge changes to both the roster and engine in each sequel. They often specifically nerf the last game's top tiers in the next iteration. Kirby from 64 to Melee, Fox from Melee to Brawl, Meta Knight from Brawl to Smash 4, and Bayonetta from 4 to Ultimate. Somehow, Pikachu endures across engine changes and direct nerfs. If you're interested in learning more about how to master Pikachu or any character in Ultimate, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. There, you can check out a character guide or get help from a coach. If you're just looking for friendlies, you can find the Pro Guides community on Discord and Reddit too. Pikachu's best iteration is definitely his earliest one. Pikachu is the best character in 64 and has been across the game's entire lifespan. That's over 20 years. It's the longest any Smash character has stayed the best, and it's the only time a Smash character has stayed the consensus number one pick for a game's entire lifespan. Yep. According to SSB Wiki, there was even a brief moment at the beginning of Brawl where Snake did better than Meta Knight. We are simplifying a bit here as it's possible that somewhere in the distant past of 64, Pika might not have sat at the top, but Pika's dominance goes very far back in the annals of 64. To the point that the 64 scene has talked about banning the character since 2006. And the top 64 players regularly label the character as the Rat. If you look at Pikachu's toolkit in 64, you can understand why it went from mouse to rat. Pikachu is borderline the best at several things in the game. Edge guarding, check. Recovery, check. Kill throws and grab game, check. Kill confirms, check. Combos and damage, check. Pikachu doesn't have any glaring weaknesses in Smash 64, and even has great tech, like a jab that confirms into grab, and invincibility on his up special startup, which allows ledge stalling. Yet, despite all the strengths, Pikachu isn't a game breaker in the way Meta Knight or Bayonetta were. For the most part, the conversations around banning Pikachu never got as far as the ones around Bayo or Meta Knight, and that's because, according to many top 64 players, the game's cast is surprisingly balanced. I love 64 because I find it's, it's a very balanced game. The game gets a reputation for being all about the big three, Captain Falcon, Kirby, and Pikachu, and all about the touches of death they have. 64's competitors claim there's more counterplay and balance than meets the eye. People all think that 64 is just a zero to death game, right? Every time you get hit, boom, zero to death, and that's not really true. If you look at 64's history, you can see what they mean. In the early days of 64, most competition was online, running through emulators. Locals weren't frequent. At this point, top melee player Isaiah would play under pseudonyms like Malva and Stomp with most characters. When larger tournaments came around, Isaiah didn't miss a beat, winning big events with Link, Mario, and the Big Three. Isaiah could win with a lot of characters. Super Boom Fan, another candidate for the best 64 player ever, plays all three of the Big Three. For long stretches, no single character was winning in 64 in the way Meta Knight or Bayo won in Brawl and Smash 4. In 2016, Pikachu got pretty close to changing that. That year, a Japanese Pika main named Wario won 
won Genesis and destroyed the competition. Simultaneously, Mariguis from Mexico and Carocarapy from the US both rose to the top with Pikachu as well. From 2016 on into 2017, Pikachu solo mains did very well, and nearly everyone had a Pika secondary. The rat looked particularly busted. Band conversations resumed with more fervor and bigger voices than before. However, the 64 competition adapted. Falcon remained an unfavorable or even matchup for Pikachu since Falcon's vertical combos negated Pikachu's great recovery. And Yoshi rose up as a decent answer to the rat since Yoshi's double jump armor helped him trade with Pikachu's aerials. To this day, Pikachu is still a 64 menace. A lot of top players have a Pikachu secondary, and there are too many great Pika mains to list here. Just glancing at the 64 rankings will show you how good the character is. But as of now, the 64 scene tolerates the rat. In Melee, Pikachu's story would be less successful, but arguably even more interesting. As an oppressive top tier, Pikachu naturally took a lot of nerfs from 64 to Melee. His back air got turned into the spin that it is today, but in Melee, it's janky and low utility. Pikachu's up special wasn't as safe or cancelable as in 64 either. Pikachu also lost a lot of range on his moves. His up tilt and his grab in particular took big hits. Still, Melee Pikachu has nearly always fluctuated around mid-tier. Only the second of the semi-official Smashboards tier list placed Pikachu in low tier. However, Melee's universal techniques are so deep that one good player can make all the difference for a character's results. In this way, Pikachu has had a mix of bad and good luck. The bad luck being that Melee Pikachu is a difficult and not terribly rewarding character. In turn, Pikachu has long had a smaller player base. Pikachu is particularly difficult because its recovery is hard to master, top tiers can easily hard punish its mistakes, its hitboxes are very complex, and its damage is very low. To understand Melee Pikachu, simply take a look at its up air. This move does a measly 4% on hit. It's also got four different hitboxes which send in different directions and open up different combo and edgeguard trees. This means, to combo well as Pikachu, competitors need to train several different combo trees and punish options for just one opener. In Melee, plenty of characters take that kind of work. The Spacies, Fox and Falco certainly do, but as two of the best characters in the game, their reward is much higher for the average player. Their combos do more damage, their matchup spread is better, their frame data is nicer, and they both have Shine! In Melee, many potential Pika players just play the Spacies, Fox, and Falco instead, even if Pikachu and the Spacies are very different animals. However, Pikachu's been weirdly fortunate in the mains it does have. In most eras of Melee, Pikachu's been played by at least one high-caliber competitor. Around 2004, a player named Rory, or Coffin Luck, mained the mouse alongside Falco. Coffin Luck didn't play Melee for long, nor did he travel much, but in his time, he was a top player in a strong region, the Northwest. He beat early top players like Sastifer, and even won an MLG event. After Coffin Luck, and around 2007, came Anther. Anther didn't quite match Coffin Luck's top achievements, but he's made strong showings like 9th at Apex 2009. He also did a lot of work with the character in Brawl, and is currently the best Pikachu in Project M. In 2009, Pikachu got a gift from the Melee Gods, a player named Axe. Axe is one of the most technically clean and strong Melee players ever, and one of the best character specialists ever. In 2009, Axe put himself on the map with a big win over PPMD, one of the five gods of Melee. By 2013, the time Melee's rankings were established, Axe was a consistent top 20 player. By 2019, Axe made history by winning a major with Pikachu. Axe's incredible success has made Pikachu a very hard character to judge. But I'm beginning to question, is, is Pikachu really good because we only watch Axe, or is Pikachu actually just a good character? On one hand, Axe clearly demonstrates some of Pika's strength. While weak in raw damage, Pikachu has great combos and chain grabs. Pikachu also has the strongest up smash in the game. Couple that with insane edge guards due to tail spikes, and Pikachu doesn't need that much damage. The rat has plenty of ways to scurry off with an early stock. Pikachu's insane hitboxes also make it more difficult to read and counter their aggression with DI. Then there are little details, like his tech in place. Thing where they tech in place, and they're invincible from frames 1 to 24 instead of 1 to 20. So a lot of Pikachus like to abuse 
common human flowchart habits by attacking in place. Pikachu's matchup spread is also pretty good given the meta. Pikachu goes fairly even with Marth and the Spacies, and Pikachu may even win the Captain Falcon matchup. That's four of Melee's most popular characters. Pikachu suffers against Peach, Ice Climbers, Jigglypuff, and to a lesser extent, Sheik. However, all of these characters are less common. With Armada gone and Wobbling increasingly banned, things look even better for this adorable ball of death. On the flip side, Pikachu has serious technical flaws. Its grab range is tiny, it's very light, it doesn't have great range on hitboxes, and it's super susceptible to crouch cancelling. Then there's the matter of Axe. His results with Pikachu might be too astounding. No other Pikachu main comes close. While there are a handful of strong regional Pika players, Axe hard carries the character in the top 100. He's been the only Pika main in the top 100 since 2017, and the only solo Pikachu since 2014. Axe consistently pushes the boundaries of the character, destroying Marfs and Spaces, doing better and better versus Sheik, pushing Hungrybox to the limit, innovating unique ways to get around the grab range, but it's unclear if he's making Pikachu better, or just making himself better. Axe is also so incredibly good at melee as a whole that it makes you wonder if he could do well with any character. He won one of the quickest games in melee history while playing against the 20th ranked player in the world. He nearly won an Arizona Netplay Regional, going all random. Because of Axe's skill, most players see Pikachu as a mid-tier that got lucky. But some players, like the Crimson Blur and Mewtwo King, see Pikachu as an underutilized high tier. Regardless, Pikachu in Melee very much matches Pikachu in the original Pokemon games. It's very rare, not often seen, and just average in strength, but it's also widely beloved and very well represented. As an interesting side note, Melee Pikachu seemed to bring great luck to its dedicated players. Cawthon Luck went on to become a top StarCraft, Heroes of the Storm, and Poker player. Anther went on to make Anther's Ladder, the definitive online ranking system for Melee. And Axe is ranked 4th in the world. In Brawl, Pikachu's mains would get a different kind of blessing. Brawl restored a lot of what Pikachu had lost. Up Tilt was a combo tool again. Grab had good range again. Multi-hits like back air functioned better than before. Jab was more useful and could lead to edge guards. Pikachu simply got better tools in Brawl. For example, Pikachu has one of the best chain grabs in the game, which, for Brawl, is saying something. The down throw chain grab gives Pikachu great matchups against Falco and Snake, two popular and strong characters in the Brawl meta. Pikachu's Thunder also serves as an insanely potent KO option on and off stage. In Brawl, Thunder is long enough to beat air dodges, and it stuns long enough to chain into itself, and, for some reason, it can confirm off of up smash and down smash. Even Pikachu's short height became more useful in Brawl. Brawl introduced a lot of tall competitors, and Pikachu could crouch under their hitboxes and projectiles. But the biggest Brawl buff of all had to be Quick Attack. Brawl gave Quick Attack a great slight hitbox that made it useful for escaping disadvantage and even better for extending advantage. Take a look at this nonsense. This is due to footstooling and a tech called Quick Attack Cancelling, or Quack. If aimed into the ground, Quick Attack could cancel into an aerial or jump. Pikachu could footstool an opponent, knocking them down, then lock them in place with Quick Attack. Esam, the top Pikachu main in the new Smash titles, could pull this off consistently. Tech like this makes Pikachu oppressive in advantage. Well, tech alongside jab locks, quick moves, combos, a down smash that shatters shields, and kill confirms. Brawl Pikachu is a certified great character. Some even argue Pikachu is the only character with an even matchup into Meta Knight. But Brawl Pikachu has one big problem, or really, two small ones. The Ice Climbers. Just like in Melee, the Ice Climbers have a very potent zero-to-death grab. Beating the Icy Abominations requires keeping out of range and separating them. Pikachu can't do either very well. Some Snake mains even switch to Ice Climbers to counter Pikachu. Olimar could also counter Pikachu using Electric-Resistant Yellow Pikmin in Solid Zoning, sometimes even forcing Esam to switch to Ice Climbers. Pikachu also lacks strong disjointed spacing tools, has one of the worst trips in the game, and suffers from Brawl's very heavy SDI, which lets players wiggle out of his multi-hits. Worst of all, like in Melee, Pika gets muscled out by a top tier. 
In pretty much every Smash title, Pikachu takes serious work to master. Just recovering requires precision. The quick attack locks take serious practice. Meanwhile, Meta Knight is better in most areas and takes the same or less work. So once again, Brawl Pikachu only ever had one truly great main, Esam. Just like Axe, Esam is an incredibly talented player who regularly ranks in the top 20. Esam's performance made sure Pikachu at least got into high tiers, but the lack of other notable mains kept the hyperactive mouse out of top tier for most players. Just like Axe and Melee, Esam pushed the boundaries of the character in Brawl, and he did it from the very beginning. This is Esam pulling off a Quick Attack Infinite back in 2008. While not great, Pikachu's player base is a bit more robust in Brawl than Melee. Z also made the Brawl rank, Anther played well in the Midwest, and Renai, the Japanese villager main, got notable wins using Pikachu. In modern Brawl, a top Pokemon speedrunner named Gunner Maniac now carries the torch and has beaten plates like Pelka and MVD. Once Smash 4 released, Isem carried Pikachu over from Brawl and got off to a hot start. He placed 5th at CEO, 7th at EVO, 3rd at the MLG World Finals, and 2nd at SmashCon, beating top competitors along the way. In 2015, at the beginning of Smash 4, Pikachu was close to a consensus top 5 character. It feels a bit odd, given that Pikachu lost a lot of combos, kill confirms, and tools like Quick Attack Cancel. In Smash 4, edgeguarding was considerably harder than before, too. Despite all that, Pikachu fit well into the Smash 4 meta. Changes to multi-hits and SDI made a lot of Pika's attacks more consistent. Pika could also get drag down combos and grabs more reliably, plus Pikachu was still fast, still had a good projectile, and could still combo pretty well. And Pikachu could edgeguard very well. Changes to ledge grabbing distances meant Pikachu could go even deeper for edgeguards. The multi-hit buffs made back air a much more reliable edgeguarding tool as well. It was long-lasting and fast, meaning Pikachu could run off the ledge and catch a predictable recovery. In terms of defense, Pikachu's quick attack may have been even better and harder to punish. And while the quack was gone, Pikachu could still cancel his quick attack on platform edges for added mobility. Pikachu was looking so good that, for a brief moment, Pika finally had another top 20 caliber player, Cosmos. However, Pikachu fell from the top 5 pretty quickly. Players were learning how to avoid some of Pikachu's edgeguarding and how to punish quick attacks. Cosmos had also switched to Corrin, once again making Pikachu sightings a rarity outside of Esam. To top it all off, one of Pikachu's worst matchups, Mario, came into vogue in 2016 and 2017. For most of his career, Esam felt Mario and Ness were the only undoable matchups. He'd switch to Samus and Corrin to handle them. Esam and Pikachu slumped a little in late 2016. However, in 2017 and 2018, Esam and Pikachu would get some unlikely help from Bayonetta. Normally, Bayo was the bane of a character's existence in Smash 4, but Bayonetta helped eliminate some of Pika's bigger meta menaces like Mario and Ness. And Esam was a Bayo Slayer. He held incredible head-to-head -head records against the top Bayos. This time, Esam solidly proved that Pikachu went even with the game's best character. By the end of Smash 4, Esam ranked Pika top 5 in his tier list. He did so because he felt Pikachu had even or winning matchups into most common top tiers. However, Esam is a character optimist. He tends to blame his own flaws as a player before blaming the character. That's admirable, but it also means he tends to think higher of Pikachu than others. For example, Esam lists Rosalina as a favored matchup. However, according to Liquipedia's head-to-head, Esam -head, has a 5 to 15 record against Kirihara and Debuzz, the two best Rosa mains. It's possible Esam just struggles with the players, as Debuzz also sees the matchup as even. But Captain L, Smash 4's second best Pikachu, lost two sets 3-0 to Fallen, another notable Rosa, and Captain L puts Rosalina as a bad matchup on his chart. Esam knows more about Smash 4 Pikachu than anyone. However, it's fair to question his optimism for the character, and many Smash 4 players did. He has all these good attributes overall, but the lack of range has always kept him back. A long lack of kill power. A lot of players felt Pikachu needed a bit more juice to run Victory Road and make it to the top. So, Pikachu ended up a consensus high tier overshadowed by oppressive top tiers, much like in Brawl. Fortunately for the world's most iconic rodent, he'd get that power up in the next Smash game. Pikachu seemed straight up buffed except for Quick Attack. This character literally has everything. He has speed, mobility, um, re re recovery, getting out of disadvantage state, and kill power. Like, what, what else could you ask for in a character? He's very mobile, so he can land, 
He can recover really well. He can edge guard really well. Basically, just everything he's good at. I still think Pikachu is the best. Pikachu is the most well-rounded character in Smash Ultimate. He has literally no flaws. It wasn't all tears and theories either. In Ultimate's earliest big tournament, Don't Park on the Grass, Isam got second place, only losing to MVD. In the coming tournaments, Isam would cool off, but only by a few degrees. At Glitch 6, he'd get 13th, and at Genesis, he'd get 7th. All three times, he was losing to great players and early meta characters. MVD Snake, Cosmos' Inkling, and Light's Fox. From Smash 4 to Ultimate, Pikachu had gotten both direct and indirect buffs. And the only major nerf was losing edge cancels for Quick Attack, which the buffs definitely outweighed. For starters, Nintendo considerably reduced end lag on Pikachu's aerials. Pikachu's aerials kept their insanely fast startups from Smash 4. With low end lag, they became both hard to challenge and punish. A few of Pikachu's moves also got knockback buffs, making it easier to kill. However, Pikachu's biggest buff came from the game's engine. Ultimate made being in disadvantage more punishing for most characters. All dodges now had more end lag. Dropping shield now took 11 frames, and shield grabs became much less potent. Recoveries became more exploitable across the board. In this environment, Pikachu immediately looks like a problem. Rapid aerials could pressure shields and catch dodges. Great speed and more shield hits done could command neutral and tech chase. And incredible recovery also meant incredible edge guards. Pikachu had also kept the serious low percent combo power it had in Smash 4. To top it all off, Pikachu's defense got even better despite the changes to disadvantage. Pikachu's back air and nair became two of the best out of shield options in the game. Pikachu's quick attack became one of the best tools to escape disadvantage, and Pikachu's tiny body became even harder to hit. Pika's back air lays the little guy so flat that players call it pancaking, and it has its own parody Twitter account. In the early meta, the little lightning rod shined very bright. With less optimized recoveries and defenses, Pikachu's edge guards and KO options really stood out. Going into the middle part of the meta, Pikachu declined, but only slightly. The character stayed in top tier, but fell out of top 5 for some. Isam e had a disappointing finish at Prime Saga and Frostbite 2019. Two other prominent Pikachus, Captain L and DM, actually outplaced Isam e at Frostbite 2019. Despite other Pika mains doing well, in the mid-2019 meta, another rat menace took the spotlight, Pichu. Pichu was lighter, but significantly more lethal than its older sibling. Now, Pichu is significantly better than Pikachu in my opinion, but Pichu is so good that Pikachu is still in top tier essentially. But Pichu had shined too brightly, too quickly. Pichu became a popular rushdown pick whose small size and huge kill power pushed other characters out of the meta. In the middle of 2019, in patch 3.1, Pichu took some of the heaviest nerfs in Ultimate's young history. Simultaneously, players were getting better at handling Pichu, walling out the great and terrible mouse baby with disjoints and camping until Pichu's self-damage stacked up. Meanwhile, Pikachu flew under the radar. Pikachu low-profiled so hard that it somehow got buffed. In the same 3.1 patch, Nintendo increased Pikachu's grab range. While the buff was nice, it wasn't nearly as important as the optimizations Isam and other Pika mains would make. By mid-2019, Pikachu's kill options had gotten stale and punishable. Confirms like Up Throw Thunder could be avoided with DI. Pikachu's lightweight also meant that it could die early to rage-filled opponents. At Glitch 7, Isam e used Drag Down Down Smash confirms as a way to fix Pika's kill power problem. This was a particularly clever adaptation to Ultimate, because Ultimate buffed Pikachu's Down Smash so that it always sends the way Pikachu is facing. He'd also perfected Pikachu's Drag Down Neutral Air loops, making it easier to build damage, and occasionally, he just used Drag Downs to style on people. The masterful optimizations were enough to win the entire tournament. It might have been Isam e and Pikachu's biggest win since the Brawl days. Afterwards, Isam e would continue to excel. 5th at Smash Summit 2, 3rd at Glitch 8, and 4th at Genesis 7, with wins on Light, Cosmos, Dark Wizzy, Zachary, DeBuzz, and MKLeo's Marth along the way. He'd get 14th on the PGRU's second season, his highest ranking since his hot start in Smash 4. In turn, Pikachu is doing well too. There are still more Pichus on Ultimate's major international rankings, however, according to Bernard's Loop, a prominent Smash Ultimate statistician, seeder, and ranker, Pikachu has the 12th highest usage rate in North America. It's also very common to see Pikachu on regional rankings, and in 2020, we're even seeing Cosmos come back to Pikachu. 
While all of this might seem like early evolution stuff, it's a big deal for a character like Pikachu. This character has often been solid, but rarely been accessible. Pikachu is a grind to learn at pretty much all levels. That grind has made this character an unpopular pick since Melee, or for two straight decades. In Ultimate, Pikachu may finally be good enough to warrant the effort and earn the popularity. In Ultimate, matchups will likely be what decides Pikachu's fate. Pikachu unquestionably has one of the best matchup spreads in the game. If a character is tall, there's a good chance Pikachu at least goes even with them. And this time, it's not just Esam saying that. This is DM's matchup chart. It's also commonly accepted that Pikachu beats or goes even with highly played top tiers like Joker and Zero Suit Samus. Pikachu struggles against meta-relevant characters like Peach, Game & Watch, and Mario. But Pikachu wins against so many common picks that it's possible this character might go from rarity to common secondary as Ultimate goes on, just like in 64. But unlike in 64, Nintendo is lurking in the bushes, watching the meta evolve, nerf bat in hand. Just a bit more notoriety, and Pikachu could get hit next. Even if nerfed, Pikachu might still be the luckiest Pokémon in existence. From the demo to patch 8.0, Pikachu hasn't just been top tier, he's been a go-to pick for top 5. From 64 all the way to ultimate, Pikachu has at least been relevant. Pikachu's done even better out in the world, going from a 5% catch rate in the Viridian Forest to the star of one of the largest video game franchises ever. Across all of that success, Pikachu hasn't lost its identity. In Smash, in Pokemon, even in the show, Pikachu has always been a hidden treasure, a character full of personality and power that can only be unlocked if you seek it out yourself. We're excited to continue this story series with all of you next time on Pro Guides. Be sure to subscribe to know right when it's up.